Welcome back to part two of our afterburner tutorial. Um, if you missed the first part of this tutorial, be sure to check it out. In the first part, we created this 3D afterburner setup in After Effects. Um, so that's exactly where we'll pick up from. So I'm gonna come up here and make a new composition, just an HD comp. I'll say okay. Then I will add a solid to this. And to my black solid, I'm gonna add element. Click on scene setup up here in the effects palette. And I'm gonna to come to my jet strike pack and I am going to grab combat jet three. Say okay. There's your model in element. So I'm just gonna rename this layer to element. And at this point, I'm just gonna add a 3D camera. So layer new camera. I'll just grab a 50 mil. And the first thing you wanna do is actually click on element, come up to your group one properties and create a group null. This just makes manipulating your aircraft so much easier. So click on create group null and you see it outputs a null object here into your comp. Um, and I'll rename this null to aircraft heading. I'll just move that below the camera. And what I'll do is I will switch it off so that it's not visible in the comp. Um, also, I feel the jet's a bit far away, so I'm gonna just open up my camera properties um, and I'm just gonna zoom this up to where I feel it feels about right, let's say there. Um, so now I can see my jet nice and close. I can see what I'm doing. I've created this null. If I open the rotation properties for that null, and let's say I play with the Y rotation, you can see there I'm changing the heading of the aircraft. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I don't change these values. I'll leave them at the defaults. And I'm actually gonna create another null. Um, and I like to use one null to control the heading of my aircraft, which is that. Um, so I'll use that null, the original null, to create to control heading. And I use the Z rotation to control the roll, but what I find is it's better to use a separate null to control pitch. So I'll just reset these. And I'm gonna take my aircraft heading null and I'm gonna parent it to the new null object that I made. Just making sure that I make that null also a 3D null. And I will rename this null to pitch null. And what I'll do is I'll make sure these nulls are switched off. And then what I wanna do next is I wanna grab my afterburner pre-comp, which is this comp here. Like I say, make sure this one is also re reset to the default position. So I will drag that and drop that into my comp. I'll just drop it below element for now. And there it is. Um, now what you want to do is make sure that this comp is 3D comp and make sure you enable the collapse transforms option. So that will allow this comp to remain a fully 3D comp inside our new comp. So let's come up here to where it says active camera and let's change that to top. What we're getting now is a top down view of our scene. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And you can see there's our jet and this other object here is our pre-comped afterburner layer. So you can see it's definitely way too big. So I'll click on it, access its scale properties by pushing S on the keyboard. And let's just try scale it down to say 10%. I will zoom back in. And you can see that our afterburner object needs to be repositioned to the back of the aircraft. Now before I do that, I need to just make sure that this afterburn object is also parented to this group null aircraft heading. There it is. So now wherever I rotate the aircraft, in theory, my afterburner should follow. Um, so let's go ahead and move this afterburner into the correct position. 
So I'll just drag it along the Z axis to where it should be at the back of the aircraft. And now I'll come down here to the side view. You can use right or left. And you can see that the afterburn object is a little bit high. We need to just align it with the nozzle of the thruster. And now if we come back to our active camera, let me just zoom out. Right, if I take the aircraft heading null and I rotate it, you can now see there's our afterburner object rotating with the aircraft. Now looking at this, it looks like our afterburner is still a little bit big. Got it set to 10%. Let's maybe try to drop that down to 5%. Much better. And as I rotate that null, you can see that the afterburner object stays behind the aircraft. Um, Obviously, if your aircraft is going to be flying away from you, then you want to position your afterburner above your element layer, like that. But if your aircraft is heading towards you, like that, then you want to move your afterburner to below the element layer in your comp. Right, so let's move on to quickly finishing the shot. So I've got a great sunset image, which I'm going to drop into my background. And immediately what I want to do is set up some lighting for this aircraft and we're going to keep this nice and simple. So I'm going to add a new ambient light. New light, type ambient, and what you want to do is use your color picker to sort of pick a color out of your sky. So I'll grab this sort of pale pink up top. There we go, we've already got some lighting on our aircraft, although you'll notice the canopy doesn't really seem to match the scene. So I'll click on element, go up to my effects palette, click on scene setup. Um, and if you look in your materials here, there we have glass. So I'll, enable, I'll click on glass. Um, and our reflection properties, I'm going to just drop the reflection down to about 100%. And for the color tint, I want to give it that kind of warm orangey shade that we had in our background image. So I guess something there. Say OK. If we come back to our comp now, you can see we're getting a much nicer result on our canopy. Um, I'm going to just quickly swing my aircraft around. I want it to fly the other way. So I'll open up rotation properties. I'll adjust the heading. There we go. Let's have our aircraft flying like that. Um, and actually, I'd like to pitch it up a bit. So let me access the rotation properties on the pitch null. Let's try Z. There we go. I want my aircraft sort of heading upwards like that. And I'll also just change the position of the aircraft. Move it a bit higher. Somewhere like that. And let's make the shot a little more atmospheric. We'll grab our light. And at the moment it's at 10% intensity. Let's drop that down to 1. There we go. So there's your basic setup. So your next step now would really be to go and add all the finishing detail to your afterburner. Um, all of that we detailed in part one of this tutorial. I'm just going to quickly run through the first few steps of it to finish this comp. If I look at it, I feel it's not quite long enough, so I'm going to just open up its scale parameters, um, and I'm going to stretch out the z-axis a little bit, probably to about there. Um, I'm also going to set this layer to add, and I'm going to apply a directional blur. And I'm just going to jack this up to say 100. And you can immediately see it's in the wrong axis. So let's just change the direction on that blur. And you'll notice it's very hard to see what's going on here. So let me go ahead and apply effect color correction levels. And in my levels I'm going to just access the alpha channel. And I'm going to crush it right down here in the histogram until my afterburner becomes nice and visible. There it is. And what you'll notice though now is this afterburner, the visibility or the intensity of it tends to change quite radically as you rotate your aircraft. Now that's obviously because um, the little pieces that make up that afterburner are in fact 2D layers and when you see them directly side on um, they don't really render and they become non-existent. So you need to kind of just pick the angle your aircraft's traveling at um, and then adjust the strength of your alpha channel to match 
So there we go, we've got our afterburner flame. And what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer now. So we'll use one layer to make our kind of orangey flames and one layer to make our big blue flame. Um, so this top layer can be our orange flame. Um, I'll just color code it to orange and our bottom layer I will color code to blue. Um, so let's quickly deal, let's switch off the bottom one, deal with our top one. Um, now our little orange rings that sit in the flame, we want to bring them back by removing some directional blur. So I'll drop the directional blur down to say 20. And these are probably going to end up being too strong, so I will just bring the alpha channel back to sort of manageable parameters. I'll switch that layer off. Let's enable our other blue layer and I want to apply effect color correction hue saturation to this. And I just want to swing the color or the hue of this afterburner flame until it gets into the sort of gas blue sort of shades, probably somewhere around there. Um, and then if I switch both of these layers on together, you can see what you're getting. So there's the start of quite a nice looking comp. I mean, obviously it could do with a bit more work, um, you could still add your glow effects, your flickers, all the things we looked at in part one of the afterburner tutorial to really finish this off. Um, and then of course you could go ahead and animate your aircraft, animate your camera. Um, you know, you might wanna come to your sunset layer and also play around with the levels there, just to give the scene a bit more punch. There you have the start of a nice atmospheric afterburner scene. Um, done entirely inside After Effects. So thanks for watching part two of this tutorial. Like I said, if you missed part one, be sure to check it out. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman for Independent VFX.